I bet you're a bit of a perfectionist just like myself. And you want the best looking stream possible. But also, just like me, you don't want to shell out thousands of dollars on a mirrorless camera you're not sure you even want yet. So today I'm going to show you how to turn your budget 1080p camera into a budget 1080p camera. That doesn't suck. I'm Doobie, this is Streamwell, let's get into it. The secret to having high quality video while using a budget camera is actually a simple fix and super cheap when compared to the latest cameras made for streamers. In fact, I'm willing to bet that 90% of you already have this and can fix your issues right now. That's lighting. Most small streamers use their gain, brightness, and even their exposure to try and artificially enhance their video quality. When in reality, these are only masking the real problem, poor lighting. So the first thing we need to do is make sure any and all camera settings are set back to default and all your filters are turned off. And when I say all the settings, I mean all the settings. Having all our settings in one place instead of across multiple programs will make our life so much easier. For example, I use a Razer Kyo, and in order to get into those settings, I would have to open up the Razer software and go in that way. Luckily for me, I actually don't use the Razer software at all. I don't even have it installed, so that's one less place I need to look for my software. Just remember, if you do have a camera that does have your manufacturer software installed, make sure you find it and set it back to defaults. The next spot to check is actually the Windows settings. Unless you've changed these settings in the past, they should be set to default, but it's always a good place to check anyways. Just open the Windows search bar and search for Bluetooth and devices. Here you should see a list of devices connected to your PC. Click on cameras, and now most likely you have a USB camera just like myself, so click that. Make sure all those settings are set to default and we'll be good to go to the next spot to find the next group of settings, which is OBS. Open up OBS and go to your camera source within OBS. Right click it and go to properties. Next, click on configure video. These are the settings I personally use to control my camera. One reason is because it provides settings not seen anywhere else and secondly, having all your camera settings in one spot compared to three or four is much easier to troubleshoot if something happens. And third, you can always save a screenshot of your settings just in case things get reset and you only have to fix this group of settings. And now a message from today's sponsor. Nobody, because who wants to sponsor this sh**? Now that all our settings are set to a baseline, we can now work on our lighting and our OBS configuration separately. The one setting I want you to focus on is exposure. Exposure controls the amount of light captured by your camera. The higher the number, the more light captured by your camera. If we slide it to negative two, you can see the footage gets way brighter, but also laggy and grainy and just downright ugly. But if we lower that setting to negative 11, everything gets very dark, but the image quality suddenly drastically improves. So now comes in the lights. By setting up some lights around the room, you can see the picture quality really starts to pop now. Now, it's not enough just to have some lights set up, it's key to set them up in a way that maximizes their potential. So now I'm going to quickly cover two-point and three-point lighting as these are the most common types of lighting for streamers. With two-point lighting, you'll want to place each light at about a 45 degree angle from in front of you. If you happen to have lights that can change temperature, that's perfect. Having lights that can change temperature can really help with contrast on your face as well as white balancing that I'll get into later. Three point lighting uses an extra light that's called a hair light. This type of lighting provides a natural highlight to the individual. To achieve this, you just need a light source facing the back of your head, but just make sure it's not pointing directly into your camera. Having it off frame is best. Remember, your lighting should make you visible to your audience, not glow like you just ingested radioactive material. All right, your lights are all set up. It's time for the final tweaking of your video settings. So let's head back to the OBS video configuration. Make sure every setting is reset to default other than your exposure and maybe your focus settings. With all your lights on and in place, adjust your exposure to the point you think is best. Then move it one tick lower. For me, negative nine looked best, so I'll set it to negative 10, and I'll show you why in a minute. Next, go to your gain settings. This should be set to zero by default. 
Now raise your gain slowly until it reaches the quality you like. I set mine to 30. The goal here is to use your exposure settings for the bulk of the change and then dial in with your gain settings. By having the exposure pushed one extra tick and then dialing it back with the gain, we're able to have a much cleaner and much smoother looking image. You may notice your color is slightly off. This could be because your lighting temperature isn't matching the temperature of your camera. And by temperature, I mean a warmer or colder looking image. Back under the configuration settings, you should see a white balance. This setting can help balance the temperature colors in your video, especially if you don't have lights that can change. If you're unable to get the color you want, then you may have to play around with the saturation or contrast. If you do have to adjust the saturation and the contrast, I suggest doing it ever so slightly and always remember that 128 is default just in case you need to come back to it without completely resetting everything. As for the type of light you use, that's 100% budget and use case dependent. So I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. However, I do suggest you invest in some good quality lighting well before you invest in a high grade quality camera for streaming. My camera only cost about $100, but my lighting I've spent about $300. And the reason is I can always upgrade my camera to a better quality, but good quality lighting is gonna be good no matter what. And this is pretty good quality. So for $400, I have this excellent setup. That's why I always suggest to new streamers that lighting, should be your first upgrade. That being said, if you do want to upgrade your stream's quality even further, check out this video right here. I cover some great tips to get you there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next week, happy streaming.